Right, hi and welcome back to Night Hacking Interviews and we have a new guest here, Tracy Lee. Hi. Hi Tracy, <laughs> and could you introduce yourself? What what are you doing? Sure. My name is Tracy. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leet. I am the CEO of a company called This Dot Labs, and we focus on helping companies with large-scale digital transformations. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, we've been really focused on things in supply chain and logistics and okay. fintech-related stuff, insurance, banking, etc. Um, and you know, I think. It's it's actually been quite interesting because helping these larger companies realize what you can do with machine learning mm -hmm. and AR related stuff right. and just inefficiencies within you know those different organizations uh, those different um, in industry verticals mm -hmm, mm -hmm. has been quite so fun. So it's it's mostly like uh, like the processes they have and then supporting with um, all kind of different technical expertise in different areas. Right. I think it's trying to help them grow, large engineering teams grow as organizations. Um, and then it's also helping them from a technological perspective. Mm -hmm. Like what type of technology should you use? Okay. Did you know you could do that? Right. Maybe you should consider using this. Um, GraphQL has been one of our favorite things to talk oh, about nice this yeah. year. Mm -hmm. I think especially when you're working with, you know, 100 person plus API teams, working with the front end and these days performance is so important. Mm -hmm just kind of introducing them to sort of like these new standards. Right. Oh, very interesting. And here at this, uh, this conference, you have two presentations, right? Yes. One more technical, I would say, mm -hmm. one more um, about methodology. So, so what are these? Well, I'm giving a talk about RxJS operators. Mm -hmm. I'm on the RxJS core team. So this one, to me, it's, it's more like a dictionary mm -hmm. because I think with RxJS, it's very difficult to understand individually what each operator does. Mm -hmm. So this one kind of walks through the, this oh, is okay. why you should use it, this is why you shouldn't, this is what you should be thinking about instead. So. Very nice. And will will you do some live coding um, as well? Because I've seen one of your presentations in the past and you did that, which I really like in general. Yeah. <laughs> um, will it be a little bit of that? Or will it be mostly slides or? It'll be all slides. I used to love doing live coding. I remember um, probably when we first met I don't remember if I was still giving the talk where I was live coding an app in Angular and React and Ember. On, you know, no, it was not that. It was a lot of emojis involved and some pictures of it. Was it bananas, monkeys, and a few other things? Oh, man, I can't I even remember. It was Angular and React only or something okay. like that. Okay, but, you know, the live coding takes so much time. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> then it's like, oh, my, I was doing an Angular Girls workshop the other day. And I was like, yes, do it this way. And I was thinking, oh, no, that's Vue. Never mind. Mm -hmm. And then I would do something else. Oh, and be like, yeah, yeah. oh, just kidding. That's React. So, you know, it's very, <laughs> <People> <laughs> like, are you, are yeah, it's very me? difficult to context <laughs> right. switch between oh, the different yeah. technologies. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but no, um, this one will, I mean, RxJS will just be a conversation about the different operators. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that everybody wonders, you know? Um, and then I'm giving another talk about the PAM stack mm -hmm. with my coworker, Rob. So what is that real quick, <laughs> just in a nutshell? PAM stack, um, it stands for performance abstraction, sorry, process abstractions and mentorship. Mm -hmm. And we call it um, a new framework for building inclusive development teams. So it's this idea where, you know, getting great developers is awesome. But if you don't have the right processes in place to make a team successful, oh, yeah. if you don't have, if you don't use the right abstractions, if you're handwriting everything, not using a framework, you know. I mean, look at a lot of big organizations, yeah. <laughs> right, when it comes to processes. <laughs> yes, and then um, mentorship from a, you know, thinking about changing the culture of organizations to not say, hey, I need to just hire senior developers, but to say, what should the role of a senior mm -hmm. developer be to level up an organization? Yep. Yeah, I think this this makes a lot of sense. So are there some like very small takeaways without giving too much information away already from especially from the mentorship part and right. you know, the processes what mm -hmm. what people can take away or why would an organization like a CEO CTO say okay w now why should we care about this principle? Mm -hmm. So the reason why we talk about processes especially when it comes we talk about it in uh, enabling teams, but we try to appeal to the developer because developers mm -hmm. think about that. They think meetings, yeah, exactly, documents. Yeah. Even for me, right? Processes uh, that sounds boring. And <laughs> yeah, but process is really this whole idea where you know, hey, you're going through the code review process. Yep. You probably have a very standard way of doing a code review process. Why don't you just write it down? Mm -hmm. 
That way, when new people come on, you can just give them a document. Yep. Or as the code review process changes, you have some place to document it or you can cross check it. Right? So this is a very good example. Another great example is um, I used to have to onboard people all the time. Mm -hmm. We were, uh, my last company, we were onboarding 20 people a week. Oh, wow. It was very crazy. So what I do now is when I teach somebody one thing, I record it on QuickTime. Mm -hmm. And then we have like a folder to say, okay, anytime you want to reference this, go to the folder and see if it's there. So in this way, it decreases the amount of time developers have to spend saying the same thing over and over yep. and over and over again. And hopefully that helps teams be more consistently successful mm -hmm. versus like, oh, Sebastian has to come in and save the day. Right. You know, it's like people shouldn't have to do that. Makes sense. Yeah. 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 And then mentorship, it's more about this whole idea where, you know, taking the idea of the 10x developer and saying, maybe we can change the, f change the framework of what it means to be successful as a developer mm -hmm. and say, if you become a 10x mentor, mm -hmm. then you'll be more successful, right? Because if you make everybody two, 10 people two times better, you're actually yeah. 20x, 20xing yeah. your team. Um, so one thing that I think really gets everybody is this whole idea where if you can imagine a team where you can't get promoted until you bring somebody else in to take your job. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, you don't want to become the best developer. You want to make sure somebody's taking your job. Yeah, yeah. You know, so those types of small little things, I think, really make a big impact within an organization on how to be successful long term. Which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Yeah. Very nice. I like this a lot. <laughs> Good. So do you have any um, special advice or last closing mm -hmm. statement for um, our watchers, maybe for f uh, related, uh, related to that area, mm -hmm. of saying, you know, like some methodology or maybe to uh, for an average day, for an average developer, what they typically can just improve from their mindset perspective? Yeah. So um, whenever we give the PAM stack talk and talk about it, the a lot of developers come up to us, junior and mid, and they say, well, how can I be successful? You know, they very, they resonate, it resonates with them a lot, but they don't know how to incorporate it into their organization. Mm -hmm. So what I always recommend is just, you know, if you're being taught something, like for example, the, the PR process, right. uh, write it down, I, I, you know, share it as a document, <laughs> right? And then, you know, maybe you're not the lead on that team, but now you have a document and I'll bet you the lead is going to be yep. like, yes, yep. give somebody this document over, you know. Absolutely. And you can help shaping that process, right? Yeah. And then that helps gain respect. I think um, another thing is, you know, a lot of uh, developers, when we talk about mentorship, you know, it's, it's very simple things like just even doing um, peer code reviews. You know, if, you know, many times on teams, there's the senior architect and nobody, you yeah. know, he doesn't even need a code review, right? Exactly. So if a junior developer, for example, starts reviewing a senior developer's code, mm -hmm. it kind of forces them to have to talk about oh, it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Right? But like <laughs> in a in a nice casual way yep. to where, you know, it like pushes somebody out of the comfort zone mm -hmm. and starts making that become part of the culture. You know, I think what happens is the junior developer or mid-level developer learns so much and then the senior developer all of a sudden, if they don't like to explain things. Right has to explain things. And this helps both people. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So I like I like this a lot. And especially uh, that mindset of creating documents. Yes. Because if we're honest, we know that we should do that, right? Yeah. And every developer would agree that it's nice to, you know, have documentation. Yes. But most people don't just want to create documentation, right. right? It's like one of these things, like once you do it and, you know, it feels better and you know it's a good thing to do so I yeah. fully uh, fully agree with that but it doesn't have to be perfect either right it's like okay i just yeah. i was just learned something i'm going to write it down spend 10 minutes exactly can be in a super simple form right like right. plain text or ask a dog mark down whatever is easy and then just done yeah yeah <laughs> very nice uh, i like this a lot so where can people find more about this method like just google the name or yeah you can google the pam stack we have a few articles written about it um we spend time uh teaching organizations as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we were actually surprised because we started doing the PAM stack because we want to help our clients and developer teams, especially when it comes to junior developers, make mm -hmm. help them make m be more successful. Um, but a lot of our clients have been now using it for change management. Mm -hmm. So 
think of a thousand person, like okay. so, some companies, right? They're like, okay, we're spinning up a development organization. In one year, you have a thousand new people. Mm -hmm what the heck do you do, yeah. right? So they're starting to incorporate things like the PAM stack into their processes to make sure that these thousand people are actually successful. Yep. So that's really cool to watch. That's pretty nice to see. Yeah, yeah <laughs> to see also such a big growth then and that right. it works, right? Yeah. That's, that's very cool. <laughs> awesome, yeah, thanks a lot for yeah, sharing. Yeah, thank you. And to be here and for all of the watchers, well, thanks for watching. Bye.